Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Today we're doing five Dollar Tree DIY projects for your Christmas farmhouse home decor. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're going to be using some faux snow, some miniature trees, some gingham ribbon, a plastic snow globe, and a little red truck. And the first thing I did was pulled off the base of my smallest Christmas tree and then I'm gonna take my pokey tool which I get from Dollar Tree some of you had been asking and I'm gonna poke it into the bottom of my snow globe which there's an insert that you pull out after you unscrew the lid so I'm gonna poke it in there and then use some needle nose pliers to get it all the way through because it's really thick plastic so then I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter by pulling out some of the needles so that it'll fit inside of my snow globe and then I'm going to give him a haircut on the inside so that my truck will fit right in front of it. I got this truck at the Dollar Tree last spring and it's so cute but I never found anything to use him for except on a tray. But this was the perfect project I thought we could make him kind of stand out and be the center of attention and enjoy him for the cuteness he is. So I'm just going to make sure that he's going to fit in front of my tree and that the tree is not too tall for inside of my snow globe and so now to put a tree in the back of his truck i'm going to cut off the top part of the larger tree with my wire cutters and then i'll just take some hot glue and glue that right into the back of the truck so now i'm going to take some of this gingham ribbon and i was so excited to find this at the dollar tree because i'm always needing the skinnier type of ribbon so i'm just going to fold that in thirds and make a sweet little bow and then use a chenille stem to wrap around the middle and twist it in the back and then I'll dovetail the ends and pop him right on the back of my little Christmas tree. So since my truck is actually just going to be resting on the inside lip of the snow globe, I'm going to have a little gap in between the plastic and the bottom of my truck. So to cover up that plastic and just kind of camouflage that a little bit, I'm going to use the faux snow and just hot glue some on there. It's a pretty messy process, especially if you have your ceiling fan on. So you want to turn your ceiling fan off for this project. So I ended up just putting my tray underneath this so that my little snowballs would stay in control and I can put them back when I'm done pouring it onto my base. And then I'm going to carefully place my globe back over my tree and make sure that my truck stays upright and then I'll push it all the way down onto the base and then screw on that bottom cover. And then I'm going to take some more of that little gingham ribbon and wrap that around the bottom so that there's no plastic showing and it just gives it a finishing touch. And here he is all finished and he is just so sweet and I love how this turned out. I'll show him a little bit more as we get towards the end with the larger vignette I'll put together. But I think this is so cute and super easy to do and just really showcases your crush for the little red truck. So something super exciting happened this week for me and I wanted to share it with you guys. I got my nails back! Woohoo! So I wanted to thank my sweet friend Mandy and her husband T. They just recently opened back up so I'm so glad to be back there and I got my toes done too and boy did they need it. For our next project we're going to be using some jute twine, a wooden medallion from Dollar Tree, and then some red fruit punch mix with a bowl of water and some one inch wood beads from Amazon. And so I'm just going to put my beads into a bowl of water and then add my fruit punch, I can't say that, my fruit punch mix <laughs> into it and then stir it around. You should probably put the mix in first so that it's easier to stir and it doesn't splash. But I did end up having to go back and paint them so that I could get a darker, deeper red 
If you did leave this overnight, I'm sure it would be perfect and it would be completely saturated, but I didn't have time, so I did have to go ahead and paint them. So I just placed each one on a skewer and then painted them with my Waverly chalk paint in crimson. And it was a pretty light coat, so they dried pretty quickly and I just pulled it off and did one at a time. So now I'm gonna take a piece of wire and make a makeshift needle since I lost my large eyed needle. And I'm just gonna place my twine in that little loop and then start feeding my beads on. And I started with the red and then went to the just plain natural wood one. But I'm gonna change my mind a few times on this project. So once I got them all on there, it just didn't go with the vignette I was making. So I decided to paint the raw wood ones with my chalk paint in black. And then I'm going to paint my wood medallion from the Dollar Tree in a white, just the Waverly white chalk paint. So after I got the black and red beads all done, I decided it was just missing a little bit of lightness in there. So I took some Dollar Tree pearls and they're a little bit smaller. And since they're pearls, they're a little shiny and sparkly. So I thought that was perfect for this project. And I'm gonna place one in between each of those beads. I'll have these beads listed in the description box below, but they're from Amazon and they are $13.99 for a pack of 200. So it's a really good deal and it'll also be in my Amazon store. Once I got my garland the length that I wanted and I used 23 of the wooden beads, I'm gonna tie my medallion to the end and I just tied a knot and then pushed my beads down. And then I fed my loose end back up through the first bead. I tried to get it further, but the opening of the pearl was just too small to get it back up in it. So now for the other side of the garland, I'm going to be making a tassel and I just used an old sanding block from the Dollar Tree to wrap my twine around it and I wrapped it 25 times and then I'm going to pull it off and take another piece of the twine and feed it through there and tie it in a knot and then I'll take the end of my garland and feed that through that knot and then it's attached to there with only one strand and then I'll take another piece and start wrapping it around about a third of the way down and then tie a knot and cut off all the ends. Now I had a sweet viewer a while back send me a video of how to make a proper tassel and she was so sweet and adorable and I haven't made a tassel in a while so I couldn't find that video. So I have to go back and locate that so that I can do this again because what she does is she ties it a certain way where when you pull it down, you can't see the knot at all and you'll only see those outside pieces. So it's a super clean and better way of making a tassel, but this way works. It's just not as professional as her way was. <laughs> So now I'm going to take my black paint pen and just write Jesus is the reason and I know I got a little too fancy with my S in Jesus. My mom doesn't like it. She said it looks like a Y so you don't have to tell me you guys I know. Anyway <laughs> just write whatever you want and you could use your cutter for this but it's a small area so make it your own. So now I made this longer intentionally so that I could use it as a rounded piece and I'm going to take a Christmas pick from the Dollar Tree and just attach that using some paddle wire at the top and I attached it in two different places so it would keep its curve and then I cut off the end of the stem using my wire cutters. And here it is all finished and I love how this turned out and it's so versatile. You'll be able to use this in a lot of different places and you could leave it long and just drape it over a tray or whatever you have that needs a little bit of color and cuteness. So I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too.
So I have a little hack for you. If you're having trouble storing your greenery, which I always have issues with that, I found this shoe holder at our local five and below. And so I got this for $5. And so I thought I would just share this with you because this is a total lifesaver. I do have a video that I show everyone my craft room. So I'll link that video in the description box below. But this is just so cool to have all of my greenery in one place and not falling all over. You know, I'm transitioning from my fall DIYs into Christmas, so I had to kind of clean things up. So speaking of organization, I received a sweet little caddy from our friends at Molly Ollie that I wanted to share with you. Sometimes I have to do my work in the kitchen where I have more room because my craft room is pretty small. So this is the Molly Ollie Caddy. It's called the Memo Caddy. And it is so convenient for me. When I have to move into the kitchen, I just pull this into the other room. It has so many different uses. And I'm actually gonna be getting another one so that my daughter, Christine, can use this for Connor because it fits perfectly into a car where you can take your diapers and all of your baby paraphernalia. And I really like it because it's all open at the top and then you have little dividers that can be moved because they're attached with Velcro. So if you need more room, you can take them out. It has a super convenient zipper on the side. It's super heavy duty and not to mention it's pretty darn cute, but it's super good quality. The workmanship is awesome. It's chemical free and I know that's important to a lot of mommies out there and it stays in shape even when I pull stuff out. I'm gonna have a discount code for 10% off and that'll be in the description box below. Or you can go to their website at www.mollyolly.com. But here's my favorite use of this caddy. <laughs> here's Connor taking a little fall photo session. And now back to business. For this project, I have a square sign, some mini hooks, some mini pumpkin buckets, a dish drying mat, some little red truck ribbon and ornaments, a black and a white soap dispenser, and a piece Christmas ornament. So the first thing I did was cut out a square piece of the buffalo check drying mat to fit at the bottom of my sign, which will be on the back side. So we're using this as a tray and making it into a pedestal. So I'm just using my utility knife to get the lines and then I'm going to go back in with my scissors to cut that down. And then before I place it into my tray, I'm going to paint the side walls with my Waverly chalk paint in white and cover up the brown parts. So now I'm going to take my little truck ribbon and I'm going to place that at the very top rim of the outside part of my tray and using just a little bit of hot glue I'm going to attach that and I started in a corner and I'm going to end in a corner so that you can't see it. So now I'm going to take a whole lot of hot glue and attach my inside pad to the tray and then tuck it down at the edges so that it's nice and clean. So now I'm going to take my little pumpkin buckets and I'm going to take off the little handles just by pulling them out and then I'm going to paint them with my crimson chalk paint. I gave this a couple of coats but you'll see in the end I end up changing my mind on these legs and I go a different route but this was still cute and I wanted to show you what it looked like. It's very whimsical, but I just felt that they were a little too big for this tray. But you guys can decide, and it is still cutie patootie. So while my pumpkins were drying, I took two of these mini hooks, and I want one to be white and one to be black, so I just took my paint pen and started painting it in black, but the tip was a little bit too big, so I had to go in with a tiny, tiny paintbrush and use my chalk paint in ink. So now I'm gonna attach these legs to the bottom of my tray, and I just used a bunch of hot glue, and I almost put some E6000 on there. I'm glad I didn't 
because I am going to remove them in the end. But this is just a Christmas tray, so not a lot's going to be on there, not a lot of weight. So I felt like the hot glue was enough to hold it. So now I'm going to take my little hooks and put those on the fronts of each of my soap dispensers and hang a little truck ornament from each one. So something I always do is keep together my greens that I've cut off of different projects and you always end up needing those for something to embellish and make a piece more full or just give it some Christmas flair. So that's what I'm going to do with this piece ornament and then I'm going to attach that to the front part of my tray. So here's one way that you can style this and I just put my soap and lotion dispenser on top and this will be going next to the sink. So I used a red votive from Dollar Tree and a shaving brush which I'm acting like that's a soap brush and so a Christmas greenery pick and then I laid my garland over that. And I do think this is super cutie patootie, but I decided to change it. I really like the red legs, but I wanted something a little taller and skinnier and more graceful looking. And what could be more graceful than a turkey baster top? <laughs> so I just decided to leave these black. I think it would still be super cute if you did it in the red, but I just left it black and hot glued those to the bottom. And I think it makes it completely different, a different look and a little more proportionately correct. So now I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree black washcloth and they come in packs of two and I'm gonna fold this over in thirds and then I'm gonna fold it over in thirds again and then fold that in half so that it looks like there's a couple of them stacked up. And then I'm gonna take some baker's twine and tie a sweet little bow at the very top and then stick some more greenery inside that twine and then place that on a white soap dish. And here it is finally all done but I think it turned out so so cute and I love the legs now I could also see them in red and I think that would be really cute as well but this is actually a functional piece and so if you're having guests over it would be cute all dressed up the way it is but you can use the soap tray for your sponge and even the little hooks you could use to put your rings there if you're doing dishes and I love my Dollar Tree Buffalo check tray in the background. And then my enamelware pitcher that my sweet friend Mary gave me years ago. And I also wanted to show you guys these precious towels that I got at Ross's Dress for Less. It says, nobody eats until we say amen. So I thought that was super cute and went perfectly with this little vignette. For our next project, we're gonna be using two plungers, two of the So Fresh, So Clean signs, and some dish towels that say dashing through the snow. So Dollar Tree has been carrying these signs and there's two different sizes that I wanted to show you. And so we're gonna be using the smaller one, but I also wanted to show you how cute this one is. It says blessed and highly favored. So I'm just gonna remove the stickers off of the back and then on the front, I'm gonna take off the fresh and the little metal pieces that are on each end using my Cricut spatula. And the metal word is just held down by some foam tape and then the side brackets have little tacks that are in the wood, so that's what's holding those on. So now I'm gonna measure to see how far apart I need my legs to be by seeing the width of my towel folded in thirds. And then I'm gonna take all of my pieces outside and sand everything down using my rotary sander. And I have a lot of people ask me about this sander and it's super easy to use, but it's in my Amazon store if you are interested. 
So after I get this all sanded, I'm gonna sand my wood dowel pieces and get the stickers off that way because it's a lot easier than having to pull that off. So I ended up making my dowel seven and a half inches long. And did I already tell you we're making a ladder? <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna use my miter saw and I'm gonna move the base over to a 20 degree angle so that when my ladder is leaning up against the backsplash, it'll be flat on the counter, but it'll be leaning against it. So then I'm gonna cut those down and then I'm gonna cut my dowels. And anytime Michael J hears me out in the garage using power tools, he always wants to come help me or maybe he's just curious to see what I'm doing, what kind of trouble I'm getting into. So he does end up helping me put the ladder together, but this is totally doable and I could have done it myself, but I always love to have him around when I'm doing my projects. So now I'm gonna see how far apart to put my rungs of my ladder. Are those rungs? Yeah. And then he's just gonna drill through both of those pieces and then attach them using two and a half inch screws. Now you guys know I like to eyeball things and that would have been fine for this, but Michael J, you know, he's the measuring guru, so we had to measure it down. So just in case you do this project, we went down two inches and then place the dowel and then at the bottom of the dowel there's a four inch space between the top of the next dowel and then four inches to the third dowel and then you'll have at the bottom a total of three inches from your countertop to the first rung but i don't think that's necessary at all <laughs> so then he drilled holes on both sides of the dowel and then he's going to screw those screws in from the outside of each of the sides of the ladder he was having a hard time because it was too dark and he couldn't see so he had to keep going outside into the sun so he could see where that hole was and i just kept chasing him with my camera <laughs> so uh, the joys of getting old <laughs> So then I took my ladder in and wiped it all down and got all of the sawdust off of it. And then I'm gonna go in with my Waverly white chalk paint and paint that all up. And I got a little help from our grandson, Carson, who was spending the night with Pop Pop. So he wanted to help and this is the perfect project to let him be a part of. He did such a great job and I love seeing my grandbaby's hands next to mine. I just think that is so priceless. So anyway, I finished sanding it and here's how it turned out and I love, love this finish. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that I'm going to use it and style it. So it's also very versatile. I'm first going to take some little rubber pads from the Dollar Tree and I cut those down to the width of the board and then I'm just going to use the self-adhesive sticky stuff on the back and place those at the bottom of the feet. And here it is all done. And I think this is so, so precious. And I, it was so easy, really. Even without a Michael J, this is such a doable project. And I'm gonna style it a couple of different ways to show you guys how versatile this piece is. And you can use it in your regular decor. You can use it in your Christmas decor. I don't know, I love it. And I hope you guys like it too.
So this is a little sneak peek of an upcoming video for Christmas. And I thought this was so stinking cute to have my little elf from Dollar Tree hanging off the ladder like he's getting ready to build a Christmas tree. So I'm telling you, there's so many ways to use this ladder. For our final project, I'm going to be using three of these long beware signs from Halloween and then a package of these little Christmas wooden stickers. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my boards ready by pulling out the ribbon and then I'm going to cover up those holes using some Dollar Tree spackle. I used these instead of the Christmas signs, which you could also use, but I like the little dog ear effect at the tops and bottoms so that it'll look like planks all the way down. So I'm just going to use my Waverly White chalk paint and paint these up. I'm not going to make it completely solid because I want some of that brown to show through. So it's kind of a reverse distressing where I don't have to pull out more paint. And on the sides, I'm just gonna do a little bit and just let that brown show through. So now I'm gonna take a yardstick and using a black colored pencil, I'm gonna make lines all the way down on each of those little dog-eared areas. And then I'm gonna take my finger and just smudge those up so that it looks like planks and it's all nicely shaded. Your finger does start to get a little hot, so you have to take breaks, but I think it looks so pretty. So you guys are always so sweet when I say I can't paint, but I really can't. And so I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do a painting when you're a non-painter. So I'm gonna take this brush and it's got kind of a rounded end and I'm gonna go down that middle plank. So really you didn't have to smudge it up all the way down, but I'm gonna make a long brown line that's imperfect because this is gonna be a tree trunk and I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in truffle. So I'm just gonna make that line. I'll make it skinnier at the top and then a little fatter at the bottom. And I'm gonna do that on all three of my signs, but I'm gonna make them a little bit different. Most of this is gonna be covered up, but you'll see what happens when you start covering it with the greens that we're gonna be using. So I'm using my moss chalk paint and my celery. So I'm just taking a rounded end brush that's kind of messed up and not perfectly flat. And then I'm just doing little whooshes. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. They're just little swishes that I'm just doing all the way down the tree. And I'll leave about three inches at the bottom so that that long trunk will show. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the celery. And you'll see, I just go back and forth and in between the ones that are in moss. So for my next tree, I'm gonna be using my fan brush and starting with the moss, because it's a darker color and you're gonna add your lighter colors as you go, I'm just gonna start tapping it very small at the top and then just on the side of my brush. And <laughs> Somebody's here. <laughs> okay, I'm back and I totally would have edited that out except that was my goddaughter who is so amazing. She just brought us some chili verde chicken soup and I can't wait to try it. So thank you, Trina. <laughs> So just pull out your inner Bob Ross, and as you guys can see, I'm not editing much out because I want you to see every stroke that I'm making, and they're not even strokes. These are just fakey painting techniques, and so you guys can do this. And when we're done, it looks like we are really awesome painters. <laughs>
So now for the third tree, I'm just gonna use another straight edge brush and it's kind of messed up too, but I'm just gonna make a few branches coming off of the trunk and I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way down and then I'm gonna go back in with a rounded brush and just start pouncing odd shapes. I don't even know what they are. I had no rhyme or reason. I'm just making little poofy bunches of bristles, sprouts, I don't know. And then I'll go back in with the celery and then we'll add the snow a little bit later. So now to make my trunks look a little more than just lines, I'm gonna take a really small detail brush and just put some black parts onto the trunk. I'm gonna go horizontally on one and then I'll go vertically on another and then I'll just make little spots on the third one. And then I'll make a little bit of a shadow right where the tree trunk meets the greenery part just so that it looks more realistic. And a lot of people ask me about my brushes and these are super cheap ones that we got off of Amazon, but I will have these listed in my Amazon store, but really any brush will work for this project. And then finally, I'm gonna take some white and then I'll put a shiny area, like where a highlight would be on one side of the tree trunk. So for our tree topper, I'm just gonna take one of the wooden stickers, the gold star, and I'm gonna have just enough glitter to give it some glitzy glam and be perfect at the top. So 
now I'm going to take my Silhouette Cameo 3 and using my Frisco Craft Adhesive Vinyl, I'm going to cut out the words Spruce, Pine, and Fir. And I'm using the font called Cream Candy. And in order to get the little swirlies at the front and end of the words, you have to actually purchase the font. Otherwise, they're free on Defont.com. I'll have these available in my Etsy shop. And on this, I didn't quite make fur long enough. So if you purchase this, it will be the right size for these signs. And then I'm just going to place those on each of their respective trees, which I really had to research. And I know they're probably not exactly right, but I guess it's just Wendy's world. So I make up as I go. <laughs> And here they are all finished and I think these turned out so stunning. I am pretty proud in a non-boastful way of course of my paint job but you saw how easy it was. It's just a bunch of strategic strokes that make it look like you know what you're doing and if I can do it anyone can do it. Speaking of which I am just amazed at the incredible pictures you guys have been sending me of your projects. I hope you keep sending them. I'm thinking of making a Facebook page where everybody can just put them on there because they come in as emails and in messages on Instagram and Facebook. So trying to put them together and share them is kind of a challenge. And by the way, I'm way behind on my correspondence. So please be patient and I will get back to you. I also want to say how grateful I am to see all of the prayer posts and how everybody is encouraging everybody in this little crafting community that we've grown and built. It just shows the power of prayer and the kingdom. And I know I'm so proud of everyone in a non-boastful way, of course, but so is Jesus. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think and share it too, if you like. And I hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.